Hello, and welcome to our second Wellness Wednesday live Q&A um, on the Paso del Norte Health Foundation's Facebook page. Today, we're here with Jana Renner. She's the program officer for the Healthy Eating Active, Active Living Initiative, the HEAL Initiative, uh, to talk about maintaining that healthy lifestyle under COVID-19, as well as some of the things organizations out in our community are doing to help us all do that. We will also be joined by two HEAL Initiative grantees, Warren Goodell of the Kelly Center for Hunger Relief and Kristen Aguilar of La Samia Food Center. Um, they'll answer your questions about community resources, the needs of their organizations and of other people out in the community, and how you can help others who are in need during this global health crisis. We encourage you to submit your questions early in the comments here on Facebook Live, and we'll answer as many as possible during this 15-minute live session. As always, we encourage you to visit epcovid19.org. It is your COVID-19 information hub for the Paso del Norte region. It was created by the Paso del Norte Health Foundation to help the community, that's you and your loved ones, find valuable resources to help get through the current health crisis. There's links and other resources for parents, students, businesses, mental health needs, and lots, lots more, including, yes, how to maintain a healthy eating and active living lifestyle. Um, so hello, Jana, Kristen, and Warren. How's everybody doing today? Good, thank you. Good, thank you. Good, good great. Thank you for joining us here. Um, Jana, let's just start off with some of the things that um, the you're doing and that the Health Foundation is doing in regards to the Healthy Eating and Active Living um, Initiative. Why is it important to can, that we continue to try to maintain healthy eating and active living even now while we are asked to stay at home and practice social distancing? Sure. So I think now more than ever, it's important for us all to stay active and eat well. Um, not only is it good for our bodies, it's good for our minds. Um, you know, going outside and taking a walk, of course, while maintaining social distancing from um, other people um, is a great way to relieve stress. There's lots of evidence that shows just being outside and breathing fresh air is so good for your mind. You come back, you feel refreshed and much less stressed. Um, so um, I think now more than ever, it's important to do that, um, to take breaks during the day, because um, I don't know how everyone else is doing, but um, I'm finding I, um, being isolated a little exhausting. <laughs> and um, so it's nice just to go take that break. I think this is um, one of the things that um, I've noticed is my inbox has been in inundated with um, online resources for um, how to stay active during this time, especially with your kids. Um, there's, I think there's resources on the EP COVID-19 website on how to keep your kids active. Um, there's, I've also received a lot of emails from national partners like Common Threads, Action for Healthy Kids, the CATCH program on how you can, um, you know, prepare healthy me meals for your kids now, involve your kids in cooking. Um, this is a great time to now more than ever to, to do that. Um, I've noticed when I'm out shopping that there's plenty of fresh, fresh produce in the grocery stores. And so this is, you know, pick, pick up some, I know you can't, you know, obviously pick up a lot of that because of spoilage, but, you know, pick up some, some healthy foods and, and prepare them. Um, it, it's, this is a great time to do that. It definitely is. <laughs> I know I've been cooking a lot more. Right? Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, aside from La Samia and the and Kelly um, Center, who we're going to talk to a little bit later in this Facebook Live, um, who what are who are some of the other partners of the Paso del Norte Health Foundation um, that are working on the Heal Initiative, and what has changed for them? What are the greatest challenges right now during COVID nineteen? You know, I think all of our grantees have really um, adapted well, considering um, the challenges that have come through um, with, with COVID-19. I mean, it's a lot of our partners are used to working with directly with, with their clients, and so they've had to make dramatic shifts. But I've been really impressed with the HEAL grantees. Um, grantees like the Texas um, A&M Colonias program, the Promotoras continue to check on their clients to make sure that they're still maintaining a healthy lifestyle and make sure that they um, have the information that they need um, to adapt to the situation we're in. Um, there are some grantee partners in Juarez that um, Arbol de Vida and um, Compass that are 
making sure that the children that they serve are continuing to get healthy meals, they're delivering them, or making sure that there's food that their families can pick up um, to prepare at home. Um, we have a partner in Palomas called Border Partners that um, has been really involved. They're pretty much the only nonprofit there, and they are making sure that um, the residents there have the information they need and that, and that they have food. Um, I could go on and on. There, there are some um, grantees that are um, delivering their services via Zoom. Um, and um, then we have a really neat partnership with the um, tech, um, not the Texas, the New Mexico State University um, Dietetics Program. They have eight interns who are trying to finish their internships. So they're adding more simulations that, that the students can do virtually to try to get those internships finished so they can graduate on time and hopefully um, be able to serve our region as, as dietitians in the near future. So I've been really impressed with our nonprofit partners. Yes, uh, that's some really terrific work that they're doing out there in the community to make sure people are still able to get the resources they need um, that they might be used to already receiving and that they can still receive them right, even right now while we're having to stay at home. Right. Um, we do want to continue everyone to, we want to continue to encourage everyone to visit the El Paso COVID-19 information hub, which is at epcovid19.org. Um, you'll find some of the resources there that Jana was talking about um, to help you um, maintain your life while you're having to stay at home. Um, lots of great information about how to stay active. Like you mentioned from Catch Global, we have some online resources on the information hub from them um, and some of the other partners. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Dave. Um, I have, um, so it lost me. I don't know if a lot of people know this. We have, we have um, five different programs that are um, in several different places in our communities. So we have programs in schools. We have a farm. We work with small farmers. We work with youth and community members. Um, we do policy work. So we have several different programs and staff in all of those programs that have had to really think about how to shift and adapt in a really crazy, tumultuous time. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges has been making sure that all of our staff, especially our essential staff, um, which are people who are working on our farm, um, staff who are doing our Farm Fresh program and working with other partner farmers to get all of this produce that's being grown um, from the farmers, making sure they're still paid uh, and get that into the community. And how do we do that while keeping our uh, staff and their families safe, you know, with social distancing? So it's been quite a challenge to figure out how we shift um, and do that. Our biggest thing, um, and to buy ourselves some time, honestly, was an organization we purchased um, farmers' produce and our own produce was donated during a three week period to give us time to figure out logistics and how we're going to get food into the community. And so when we purchased that produce, we just donated it uh, to several organizations, um, including Kelly, that, you know, um, the Kelly Food Pantry that need produce and are doing direct services to a lot of the communities. So it's been a really big challenge to figure out how we make connection with all of uh, the folks in our program and still practice social distancing and transfer everything to virtual and online learning. Um, it's been kind of a really quick learning curve for sure, but our staff is doing amazing things right now. Let's check if we got Warren Goodell back on the line. Warren, can you hear me? I can hear you. Am I still there? Okay, I don't seem to still yes. be hearing anything from Warren. Um, so, Kristen, um, what resources? Uh, I know that La Semilla does a lot of great work educating people on how they can um, eat farm fresh foods and grow their own farm fresh foods and building community gardens and community farms. Um, what resources are still available to community as far as those the education and as well as their gardens and farms that may be out there that they've already started working on? Right. So we're going to be rolling out in the coming weeks um, a lot of online and virtual education um, resources. We have a chef who's going to be doing some cooking demonstration videos to show some healthy ancestral wellness based activities that people will be able to make at home with their families. Um, we have a lot of 
resources that are going out to the schools right now that have been adapted from our edible education program that parents can do at home uh, with their kids in the yard, in the kitchen. Um, and then we're gonna be piloting for a few families in our programs, uh, produce and grocery boxes in the coming weeks as well uh, with the farm fresh produce that we have and that our partner farmers have. Um, so keep an eye out on our social media and our website coming up. We're going to be having a lot of online resources, um, a lot of really great activities that you can do with your family, with your kids. Um, and then we also tend to really post a lot of ways that people can support a lot of the people that are doing this work on the front lines um, that are putting, you know, their health at risk every time they're making sure we have the essential services that we need. So, um, yeah, stay tuned in the next week or two. We're going to have a lot of that rolling out. Great, great. Um, and where can people go to check that out? So we have, we're on Facebook and Instagram at La Semilla Food Center. You can find us. And then our website, which is currently being redone, um, and we'll post that on our social media when that comes up, is lasamillafoodcenter.org. And we'll have a lot of those resources posted there, there as well. I do have some information that Warren has sent me about um, – about the Kelly Center um, and what they're doing right now. So if you don't know the Kelly Center for Hunger Relief, um, they they operate a food bank here in central El Paso. Um, they also op operate what's called the Fresh Start program um, for community members who are in need of uh, fresh groceries and um, also some uh, other programs that they offer, such as uh, Zumba to help to get them active uh, and other resources like that. Um, what he's told me is that Fresh Start and, and the food pantry um, have had to really pivot right now in this, into crisis mode. Um, and while it's been a very fluid process, they are still adapting to some of the logistics. Um, after the first two weeks, um, some of that chaos has started to ease uh, and the Fresh Start staff has assessed ways that they can adapt the program. Um, all their clients and see how they're doing, make sure that they know the new process of getting food which is that they're doing drive-through pickups rather than having people come in and pick out what they can what what they can take for their family um so they've just been reaching out to everybody they've been in communication with everybody um of course using some um some of the mobile technology that's available uh they've begun giving zoom classes on youtube uh, which is great um, and they're just using a lot of various phone calls and other online um, resources to help get the word out that their services are still available. Um, so that's great to hear from from their side. If you can, if you want to go on Facebook or online and search for the Kelly Center for Hunger Relief, you will find their Facebook page and their website with lots of information. Um, should you want to help, they mainly need donations of uh, monetary donations because they're able to leverage that money in a better way to purchase food for the food bank because they can buy in bulk um, rather than monetary donations and they are, are also always looking for volunteers so if you have been isolated and you are not displaying any symptoms um, i would contact them and see how you can go down there and volunteer and help distribute some of that food um, so we're getting close to our 15 minute mark here. And Kristen, um, I know we talked a little bit about how the community can get involved um, with La Semilla um, and, if, and help your organization as well as others out in the community. Um, can you just mention again, some of the things that, um, some of the needs of your organization right now and how people can help? Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, because of the current circumstances, um, we're not able to take volunteers at our farm right now, which I know a lot of people really love and it's kind of unfortunate, right? Because digging in the dirt is one thing, but um, it's just amazing for your mental and physical health. Um, but in lieu of that, donations are always welcome. Um, you know, we're really working to support the youth that we're working with and their families, uh, the small farmers that we work with. So donations, you know, do help us and donating to other organizations who are on the front line, um, like Kelly Memorial and other folks too, um, throughout the region um, is really important as well. And hopefully we'll keep everybody updated. You know, whenever this starts to pass, I don't know what our new normal is gonna look like, but um, it will be, you know, there's a lot of hope that it can be something really beautiful. And so, you know, we'll update people as things change and volunteer opportunities become available going forward. Great, and I'm sure that we'll all continue to adapt further to this 
um, social distancing and everything else that's uh, involved with this current health crisis. And hopefully as things kind of ease back, um, we'll have more resources available and be able to do more. Um, I do thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Jana. Thank you, Kristen. And thank you, Warren. Uh, I'm sorry that we had a little bit of trouble connecting with Warren on our end, um, but hopefully we got all the information out that we can to the community. If you have more questions for anybody, um, continue to comment here on the Facebook Live, which will continue to be available on the Patsel North Health Foundation's um, Facebook page. Um, you can continue to post your questions and we will answer them as soon as possible. Um, again, we do encourage you to visit epcovid19.org. That's the El Paso COVID-19 information hub online. Um, it was created by the Paso del Norte Health Foundation to help you and your loved ones find valuable resources to get you through the current health crisis. There's lots of links there and other resources for parents, students, businesses, uh, mental health needs, and a lot more. Uh, and that includes healthy eating and active living, which is what we've been talking about here today. So again, thank you, Jana, Kristen, and Warren. And thank you to everybody for watching and we'll see you next week for Wellness Wednesday.